Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, March 27th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me carry. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast. It's been determined in length, episode number 641. And guess what, folks? It is time to spill the tea. <laughs> oh my god, I can't breathe. <laughs> um <laughs> Welcome to the reaction episode where we just play a sound clip and and, and, and make Damon really that. confused. Uh, uh, um, um. <laughs> Yes, David. Use your words. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need that. Um, first of all. <laughs> the live chat. Oh my god! Oh god! Um, <laughs> and, and secondly, yes, Chuck. I don't know if that was tea. <laughs> for the record. I don't- I mean, it, when, when we're putting tea into here, that might be what it sounds like. Actually, it doesn't because it's plastic. Oh, my God. For the record, that's what YouTube said that was. <laughs> but YouTube no, you know why? I, I mean, it could be a plethora of different show. liquids. So <sighs> could also be liquids being expelled. Um... <laughs> I mean, no. That's, no. that's a, that's a no. different sound. It's it's I similar, mean, don't get me wrong, but no, it, not it, the it, same. It, it is it, mm, the, it is the clear mm, sound of somebody pouring a liquid from a decanter into a glass. Oh, if you say so. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you we, could play. We could yeah. find a uh, find the sound of somebody peeing if you want us to, but <laughs> and, and you'll note that it that there is there is some differences. Oh my gosh! Oh, okay. <laughs> so I can stop crying from laughter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, Gary. Um, yes. That <laughs> <laughs> goes well with the post show image. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Chuck. You're helping hey, us break this episode. Shout out to Chuck in the live chat. It's like the best response. Oh, yep, we broke Damon. <clears throat> All right, so welcome to episode 641. All tea, no shade. Hence the sound effect. The Disney conundrum. Um, Phew. So here's the thing. We have a challenge (laughs) when an international corporation with multiple loved um, intellectual properties steps into a pile of political crap, (laughs) which is where they stand at the moment. Uh, So the questions are, can the House of Mouse fix their LGBTQ plus problem? Can we support the land where dreams come true when villains threaten to destroy the world we actually live in? Mm. Uh, So... Yes. Uh, whoo. So right, while it's, put this in context, like, because I'm out of the loop. 
Okay, so um, in the state of Florida, Governor DeSantis is expected to actually sign into law what has already passed the state house and senate the don't say gay bill um it is highly problematic it basically um this is a part of a conservative effort to put parents first in the education of their children and i'm like okay like like simplistically it sounds decent or okay like you're like all right so parents should have a say in stuff but legally it's it's far more um nefarious and as uh things go it's rather obtuse um yeah. in in what it is trying to do um so uh yeah Long story short, basically, um, it's about, I think, anybody who is considered in a primary grade level to not be taught about, um, I think it's sexual orientation or sex in any way, shape, or form. Um, so, really quickly, and I'll probably share this link into, because I found a really, like, it's a, it's a blog, more than likely, the everygirl.com. It says what does parental it's called the right is the act is called the parental rights in education bill. Right. And it says, first things first, the parental rights this sorry, quote, first things first, the parental right in rights in education bill does not prevent anyone from saying the word gay in schools or otherwise. Don't say gay, in quotes, is a moniker for the bill that critics began using in its in protest to its passage earlier this month. The bill itself is pretty short, seven pages of language that primarily lay out the rights that Florida parents have to be informed and make decisions about their children's, quote, mental, emotional, or physical health or well-being, end quote. But buried in provisions that most people would likely agree upon is provision three, which prevents, quote, classroom instruction, dot, 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 on sexual orientation or gender identity for students, end quote, for students, between kindergarten and third grade. So classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties um, is what's being banned on sexual orientation or gender identity for kindergarten through third grade. It also prohibits teaching in a manner that is not age appropriate or de developmentally appropriate for students, which critics say could be interpreted to extend to all grade levels. Mm -hmm. And parents can sco sue school districts for alleged violations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so so um, that's the that's the bill. That is in Florida where Disney is. And to kind of add on to what what is the conundrum is, um, to be blunt and simple, um, there be a lot of gays up into Disney that this could potentially affect. And Disney has pretty much been and silent about it. Well, Bob Chapek, who's the new CEO, has really stepped in a pile of shit on this. I, I don't mm. know how else to say it. Um, Bob Iger, the the previous CEO, came out immediately um, in social media and was like, you know, this is not appropriate. This is not what we believe in. Um, and it really put, like, the LGBTQ community, who are fans of Disney and those that are employees, <clears throat> in an unfortunate situation, you know, and Disney owns lots of properties. Disney owns Pixar. Like, you know, like, so it it doesn't just, it isn't just about the parks in Orlando because overall um, there's going to be a link to a, a video essay by James Summerton. If you're not familiar with him on YouTube, um, he's uh, actually, I think he's, I think he said he's 32. Um, he's young thirties. He's, uh, you know, a, a younger generation I was watching several of his videos today, but the one I linked is called Disney Silence on Gay Youth. And he actually talks about this very issue. And in it, he um, describes that Disney has over 200,000 employees, 77,000 of which live and work in with the parks in Florida. And that Disney is not doing anything effectively to address this political situation and how it impacts, you know, one of its fan base um, communities. And like as an awkwardness later this year, just as an example, the World Bear Weekend is in Orlando in September. Mm -hmm. Presumably 
some of the bears and others who are going to be going to the run might be thinking about trying to go to a Disney park while they're there. It's not a part of the actual weekend, but if you were to extend your vacation and want to go, you know, to a park you haven't been to or one you haven't Mm -hmm. seen in a while, like now it's about, well, what do I do? How, like, do I spend my money? Do I not spend my money? You know, uh, you know, it's pretty complicated because James, I've I've came up with this idea earlier today. I think of him as a newer generation of Larry Kramer, who, mm. um, rest in peace, has passed away during the AIDS epidemic, was incredibly hypercritical and very vocal and outspoken in criticism about what was being done for HIV and AIDS. Um, mm-hmm. Like basically helped begin and was you know, like a staunch like piece of the ACT UP movement and was basically, you know, creating these anthems of screaming at the medical community that you're killing us, like you're doing nothing to extend our lives. Now, mm-hmm. I realize it's a little bit um, dramatic to, mm-hmm. to compare James that way, but he's the first person that I know of of a younger generation under me that is really critical. And he has been for quite some time in his video essays. Um, They all run about a half an hour long. He has a whole series. He's been critical of Disney. He's like, there's, there's queer baiting. Like they do Mm -hmm. these things. They just don't want to say certain stuff because they're scared Mm -hmm. because, you know, well, characters can't have sexuality, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. And he's like, girl, like (laughs) you're real. Like, they don't like the director of Luca didn't want to like talk about it and about how it's a, you know, about two young boys potentially, you know, who are gay. And yet the whole LGBTQ community that saw it was just like, hello, that's an allegory like that relates to our lives. Um, Pixar's newest movie, um, Turning Red, you know, is another uh, story about a person who is trying to not be their authentic selves and then comes to embrace it. So, I mean, there's all these undertones and things that we find mm-hmm. in the storytelling that we have been supportive of. And over the most recent decade, Disney has also started merchandising and making money off of us. So mm-hmm. now we have rainbow pride apparel and we get all these slogans and things about that love is love and you know your fan you know you get to you know make your own choices and be your own person and Mm -hmm. and so it's like oh like for the longest time the only thing that was gay about disney was the gays who showed up on pride day wearing red shirts and it wasn't anything official by disney and then in the past decade they've kind of changed their tune and so they know that there's gay days and there will be these, you know, groupings and outings. And so they started, you know, with their pins, they started selling them with like rainbows and Mm -hmm. stuff. And so in the beginning it was kind of like a nod, but in the past, I think four years, right before the pandemic, it was full on. Like, are you queer? We've got Mickey ears with rainbows, bitch. You better buy them because (laughs) you're going to love it. Like, I mean, you know, and, and, all of this stuff. So like in the, in our video, if you're watching to my uh, left, as you're looking at the video, that rainbow Ewok set is directly from a t-shirt that they sold of Star Wars Lucasfilm property as part of their pride release, I think in 2019. Mm. That is an example of them absolutely marketing to our community and making a buck off of us. So like that's, part of the issue now on the other side of me to the right is the sketch drawing that dean dubois did Uh, i just need to take a moment for the gorgeousness of that man um (laughs) who is the creator of lilo and stitch and how he celebrated when marriage equity you know equality came around from the supreme court and everyone has tied that to the concept from that film which says ohana means family and family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten which has sort of become another sub theme within the community and that's where everyone's having not everyone but a lot of people are having this schism like what do we do about this mega conglomerate internationally who you know is kind of really not being there for us and i think that's the that's the biggest issue i think most people are having right now is like you you've you Cater to us, you take our money, you you quote unquote support us, but here we are in the state that you lit that you were born from, um, birthed out of. There's this bill that is 
potentially harmful to our community. Um, and you're choosing to ignore it or not say anything, or I don't, I don't know what this dude said, but you know, whatever, like you're, you're choosing to not support things against it, which sounds kind of familiar. And, and so, I mean, James makes a really good cogent point in his video where he's like, here's part of the, the problem or the issue. Disney is a corporation. Disney is answerable to its stakeholders, to its shareholders, like to the people that invest in it. And those people have a lot of money and don't give a shit unless mm -hmm. it's going to affect their investment. Yep. And he kind of talks very briefly about whether or not to pull out financially. He's like, so then the investors get on Bob Chapek as the CEO and then he has to do something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, what would that thing be? And would it be worth it or effective? Um, so really, this is just kind of a, a conversation about, I call it the conundrum, because it's like, they are a very popular media enterprise company conglomerate that, you know, puts out product mm -hmm. that we consume that we pay for. Yeah. And yet at the same time, they have financially donated to political party individuals who are either writing or supporting the legislation that is in direct conflict to yeah. our like existence, like yeah. in recognition of that. And that's the shitty part. Like, mm -hmm. That is that is the part that's kind of like the gut punch. It is the the two-phase hypocritical bullshit that we deal with with a lot of corporations and politicians out there. It's the, we will shake your hand and and be in your parades and and make your our rainbow, you know, Mickey ears and all that shit or whatever. We'll, we'll do all these things, but the, at the end of the day, like, when it comes down to will we actually go, like, step to the line and support you, we're not going to do it. And that's kind of what it's feeling like. And I love that this is all to no shade because that's how I'm feeling. Like, like, fuck this. <laughs> to be blunt. Like, it is... I was reading the article, the Vox article you had posted, and it reminded me of things I've seen on Twitter. Um, there have been a lot of... Let me just put this in here. Um, so... In the article, quote, in response to the backlash over Disney's inaction, CEO Bob Chapek said that the company unequivocally stood with its LGBTQ employees, expressing their support through, quote, the inspiring content that the company produces. After an open letter from LGBTQ Pixar staff and their allies alleged that Disney had actively scrubbed, quote, overtly gay affection and queer representation from their movies, Chapek emailed employees that the company would halt all political donations to Florida and Friday and donate to groups fighting similar legislation in other states. But, you know, that's not the first time we've heard this. Mm -hmm. That's not the first time we've heard that they, like Disney in particular, keeps a lot of the things under, like, wraps, very tight to the vest, keeping things maybe a little Im ambiguous for the sake of being ambiguous without giving any overtly overt I don't like overt sexual things but like I mean we've seen it in a lot of the video movies and stuff recently it's there but it's not there it's close well, right and that's what James is really interesting like he went to school for film media like production and, and that kind of stuff so he he has a very specific eye and has done a lot of like discussion about lgbtq content in media and he's been pretty harsh on disney because he's like there's always the subtext so he mm -hmm. like in one of his videos um i don't think it's the one i linked but a different one he kind of talks about like raya and the last dragon he's like Two young, strong women who, who like form a uh, form a bond. They become enemies, and then they come back together. Like you know, he's like all the things are there, like to say they're lesbians, but we're not going to say they're lesbians. Mm -hmm. And he talks about Luca, and he's like these two young boys who like you know are you know pre pubescent and discovering themselves, and you know, but we're not going to say they're gay. But everybody's like, 
they're two gay boys. Like, seriously. <laughs> like, I yeah. mean, he plays this interesting video montage. He's like, none of this is gay. And then, like, just lets it play. And I was like, whoa. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, to just watch 15 seconds of clips of things that were in the movie that I saw, I was like, yeah, okay. Like, I get they're it. kind of gay. <laughs> well, and then if you watch the film, spoiler, um, and you get towards the end, there's this old, like, older female couple that are revealed they're always together they're always traveling everywhere and then it kind of in like infers at the very end of the movie that they're actually a lesbian couple hello yeah. like so like his he he has high criticism about the courting of our community and the representation mm-hmm. and how like and and he's very critical about the fact that people say you know that you know well this is for the youth and blah 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 and you need to put sex in there and he's like Right. We don't need two male characters to kiss. Like, we don't need that as affirmation. But what we Mm -hmm. don't need also is the denial, like Mm -hmm. the the political dancing about whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, just let just make your characters and let them be the characters that they are. And. You know, like um, he and, and it was one of his videos. It was really interesting. It was about Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Anthony Mackie, who plays um, Falcon, the new Captain America. You know, there was this whole subtext about how Sam and Bucky like have this bromance kind of relationship and that the fandom had kind of shipped them together, possibly as boyfriends. And he was asked about it and he apparently made the statement on social media, which is a lot of word salad. Good God, girl. Um yeah. And it and he says something along the lines of, um, you know, that how that you know homosexuality is beautiful, and yet in the same statement, it's like he's kind of pushing back on them seeing what they want to see. Mm-hmm. And a part of me was like, girl, like you didn't have to say anything, and you could have right. just said as an actor, the fandom will see what the fandom wants to in the characters. And period. Stop. Right. <laughs> keep explaining anything yeah because now you're starting to look like you're confusing things because you're talking about how you want to have a sensitive like hyper masculine role model so that like men young men can learn that it's okay to be emotional and have feelings and yet at the same time you sort of seem to be a little panicky about the fact that they might think that your character is gay like chill the fuck out like you don't like you could just be okay with things the way they is you know so, you know, and yeah. I'm not saying that there's a perfect answer by any means. This no. this episode is just more about, I guess, us venting. And, and it is really a <laughs> conundrum. It's like, how do you be a fan? How do you be supportive? And yet hold them accountable yeah. to this. And um, part of it is, is that um, in the days following Chapek's statement uh, with the backlash, Disney ultimately announced that it would halt and reassess all political donations in Florida. And um, I, it doesn't go into it, but I thought I saw that they were creating a um, task force, I think, internally within Disney to bring forward um, leaders of the LGBTQ community in the rank and file and then also outside of the organization, I believe, as well as other um, you know, communities to basically do this reassessment to look at where they're putting their money because – like he no offense he was a real dipshit about it like he didn't say anything at first and then he was like well this isn't something that we get into like disney mm-hmm. disney doesn't get involved in politics yeah and it was like oh bitch you're a dumbass because yeah. if you don't get in politics then you don't give donations yep Ta-da! it's that simple <laughs> like again like i you know you can't like Okay, fine, fine. What is, what, like, again, this is all Tino Shade, so call it like it is. Like, you can't say that and not know the history of the company and know that there was a lot going on that was very politically motivated, very politically, you know, you know, part of the thing. If you don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, Why do you think we have really long, 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 long copyright terms? Mm-hmm. Fact. Also, just to be to kind of put it in perspective, like we have a lot of wonderful, like older cartoons and 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 um, such that are pretty much war propaganda without being war propaganda, quote unquote. You know, it was very much part of the the, the company. Like that was the thing. Like, so like don't 
say like, oh, we're not political. No, you are. Be, be, your entire company is a history of politics and, and yes. being shitty at politics. Yes. Like you, you have all this shit here. So don't, don't say anything like, oh, we're not political. Let me, let me, let me, let me pause you guys because I'm really confused about this whole situation. Are we mad? Are we not? Are we, things are just weird. I I don't understand what's going on here because based off of what I'm reading in here, and this is my understanding as of right now, this is why I'm asking for clarification. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So initially just weren't doing anything mm-hmm. about it just we're not gonna push for it we're not gonna push against it we're just gonna back up let the politicians politic mm-hmm. and then oh, correct they were they, doing that while also giving money to politicians for other reasons right and, probably tax uh, breaks. But, but yeah yeah then when they did, then they started actually taking some sort of stance and initiative on it and actually communicating that out. They just, people just wanted them to say something because they're a high money powerhouse uh, in Florida. And, right. I think, I think, the and, and they is, did is... that because of pressure from the LGBTQ community activists because i probably would not have said anything about it mainly because i'm not that active and they're taking steps now so the conundrum is okay they were bad to begin with but they're getting better is that it uh, uh, or should we still be bad at them i i don't know what the i don't understand so i think I'll... well sorry there's wait. I think, go ahead. No, I just want to say real quick. I think, Jeff, you are perfectly um, reflecting the confusion in the community. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who are staunchly upset and bothered. And yet at the same time, I think there's a lot of people who are like, now what? Like, do we boycott? Now they're they're not boycott. Yeah. You're, 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 Gary, yeah, Gary's right. Like, Jeff, you're literally hitting the nail on the head on, like, okay. why this is such a thing. Okay. Because it's just like, what do we do? Are we mad? Are we angry? So here's we... my thoughts. To maybe to help, help get into the con- conundrum. And maybe it's just me being a little analytical, thought, thoughtful judgmental Mm -hmm. of the um, uh, local minority is yeah Disney wasn't really saying anything which they weren't doing anything to stop it but they weren't doing anything to not stop it help it they were currently doing their political their normal thing as a business because they are a business. Hey, did I mention something about copyright laws? You know why that was? Because Walt Disney, and I mean Walt Disney, the founder of the company, uh, had paid a lot of politicians in order to get the copyright laws to what they are today. That's doing business. If this bill hadn't come around, they would still be doing that. And but I then, I, but then, people were starting to say, "Hey, uh, hey, boss!" Because they walk out by employees, uh, and but several other people who love Disney are like, "Hey, why aren't you saying anything?" And they said something, and was like, "Okay, oh shit, uh, we better." halt everything until this blows over but they did and they said something no we're with our lgbt any money that was going there was for other reasons and if they're using that money for this reason we we're stopping so at that point i'm like great and it sounds like you're taking some additional initiatives which you probably should also do 
but not necessarily the things that we were specifically doing because you're having a task force to reevaluate things about the LGBT community to get it more like blatant. Um, like Gaston's uh, henchman, I can never remember his name. Um, at least in the live action Beauty and the Beast was portrayed at least to basically have a huge crush on Gaston. Um, and these subtle, subtle appearances. It's one of those things where I think some companies, especially when they're on a, on a nice, uh, uh path that they have trouble trying to figure out, well, how do we integrate this sort of message? Uh, they've got the, 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 I think onward had a lesbian police officer who mentioned something about, um, her girlfriend. Um, so they have taken some steps, but they haven't really pushed it. Uh, haven't gotten to the point of Legend of Korra, which is not a Disney property, by the way. But that's a good example of how you could integrate something like this. Uh, and then it's just trying to, you know, baby steps, especially for a long-term company. Um well, uh, and, and trying to add those. My thoughts on this is, uh, I think this is being a little overblown. Uh, that now that they're actually pushing something towards us, and if you think better, you know, please communicate. People give suggestions. So, I, I'm I'm not feeling I'm not feeling the need to protest at all based off of what their the actions that they are taking right now somebody said flip-flop in one of the articles and i'm like how did they flip-flop when, when did they say they were for it and then suddenly say they were well, against it so they just didn't say anything and now they're saying what their stance is right well possibly i think the flip-flop is related to the political donation issue and here's a little bit of insight so um there's a political article I'll end up linking. So Disney donated 4.8 million to Florida candidates in the 2020 cycle. Mm -hmm. And then they turned around and they offered or attempted to donate 5 million, which is a little bit more to the human rights campaign. Once all this shit started happening. And so it looks like they're kind of trying to counterbalance mm -hmm. what they've done. And HRC declined the 5 million and was like, absolutely not. You don't get to donate money to us just because, like, now your feet are being held to the fire in the limelight and you're under scrutiny because yeah. you were doing this stuff. Yeah, I think that's the issue overall. And I'll, and there's a part of it. I love this Vox article. Um, I, I uh, don't like this Vox article because it doesn't, to me, it's saying, so, saying okay, they didn't say anything. And then when they were pushed, pushed for it, then they but, actually did action. But this is what I'm getting at. Because so, as far as I could tell, they were doing what they normally do. But quote, that doesn't make it right, Jeff. Quote, the current controversy has illuminated the disconnect between one of the world's biggest companies and it's the very devoted fan base, which includes large numbers of devoted LGBTQ fans. Disney has parlayed the feel-good, empowering message of its movies to position itself as a progressive, diverse, inclusive, and highly profitable company. Is an action in Florida paints a different, perhaps more realistic picture that this company isn't living up to the promises it's trading on. And it's far from the first time the company has fallen short on queer issues. For Disney's LGBTQ fans and employees, it's a betrayal that can't even come as a surprise. That's part of the issue. Because as I've been saying, this is not the first time that Disney has failed to act in regards to supporting the fans that it claims to support. Because if I'm remembering, and I could try to look it up and all that stuff, but there was the whole, in Florida, the gay adoption issue from several years ago where Dis Disney was called to respond and react, and they didn't. And I believe, and don't quote me on all this, this is just me going through personal memories that are probably faded because of time it was also found that they were again politically donating to people who were against like the were for these bills that were being put in to basically 
remove the ability for gay people to adopt in Florida. So it is this it has become an issue in the past and it continues to become an issue where they're saying we want to be supportive of all of these people. And this is a feeling about of, companies like all over the United States. I understand. I understand that this is an issue that is for every company all over the world, but that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it fair. Oh, because Nike does it or because Adidas does it or because Starbucks does it, that Disney gets to do it too. What we're talking about right now is there is a bill on the line that is about to be signed that could potentially be a problematic. And Disney at first was like, we're not going to touch it. But we are touching it because we're donating to people, politicians that are for it. Right. Which, so again, now, the original intent to donate to that politician was not for any reasons involving this bill. Well, we don't know okay. that. Like, we, we can, I mean, we can, we all can... politicians, then, then, then so be it. So I mean, every politician yeah, it's, it's is a doing everything issue. for the secular things yeah, because this is they vetting, can do it. This, this is has nothing issue. to do with any of it all. So this is, this is a vetting issue with every single shit. company let in them, the United let them, States. Let they, them donate to whoever the fuck they want to and let that be the thing that they do. Because yeah. who cares? Because it's just... For the money. It's just money, right? That's what it is, right? It's all just fucking money. <laughs> no. That's what it's going to be, right? I mean, it's just yeah, money in politics. It is, because right? they're trying so, to get certain tax breaks. gay people which, die. These people were supporting, <laughs> and that's why they were Because they were people are supporting things. If kids commit suicide because they don't have access to the educational things that they need whoa, whoa, hold to back. support. Roll yeah, I'm roll going back, there. No, I am not rolling back. This is all Tino Shade, so listen. Okay. The, per the reason this is a problematic is because of what it does, what it potentially means. It's saying we can't say gay or whatever to young kids who maybe need that support potentially in somewhere because they're not going to get it at home. They're not going to get it from their friends. They might be able to, they're too young to get it from the internet. So the only place that they can get any kind of support for what they're feeling inside is from school. So, if we are taking that away, they no longer have the support. Right. So they are left feeling lost, abandoned, with no sense and no way of knowing what they're feeling inside and how they feel, whether it's good. And the only thing they're gonna get is the negative because their parents are saying, well, you can't be gay or you can't be trans or you can't be lesbian, or you can't be bisexual or pansexual, are those feelings that you're feeling inside about the boy in class that you think you want to kiss? Like, can't have that. And they don't have any of that support anywhere else because of this bill. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? They're going to feel defeated. They're going to feel like they can't, they have no, no, place, no place else to go. And we've seen it happen time and time again that kids, that LGBTQ youth that don't have access to anything that could potentially save them and give them some kind of positive influence, that's when they go to the worst route right. and feel like they can no longer live. Right. And that's what I'm talking about right now. That's yes. what I'm going at right now. And that's where I feel this is going. I'm with you. And that's why we're asking, why can't something, the largest company in Florida that employs the most people in Florida, particularly LGBTQ people, why can't they, why didn't they say something when it happened, when it was all the way back in the beginning? If they had said something or had their shareholders or whoever go against it, we wouldn't be where we are right now because money is power. And if you are the largest company in the state, you have the potential to sway everything. And they chose to do nothing until they got their feet put to the fire and their employees were like, what the fuck are you doing? And now they're saying something. Now they're doing something. I think it's unfortunate that it's... Right? I think it's an unfortunate 
painful lesson that's playing out in in public that they fucked up. Yeah. Everyone expected better of them and they and they screwed it up. Yeah. And Chapik is is really the key issue in terms of being a CEO. When when he says that their advocacy better reflect their values. Girl, it should have been doing that to begin with. Where the hell have you been? Yeah. We when, are you, state, when, yeah. when you donate in 2020 over almost like $1.4 million to the Republican Party or GOP Senate campaigns, but you only donate 313000 to the Democratic Party, it's a little tilted, like four times the amount or more, like... You don't think that that has ripple effects into the things that they're going to support and the things that they're going to do with those donations. And and I think that that's also a, a significant seat change that's happened in the most recent years is that people are starting to really be more engaged and ask the questions and be like, what are you doing? I mean, we discussed it last year. We talked about companies that are, you know, how the HRC puts them on a list. And even that's subjective mm-hmm. and questionable. Yeah, so when you when you look at these things, I think that's what's difficult is that people are, you know, trying to to mesh together the fact that it's an entertainment company and that we like what they put out there. And yet what they do with our money that we give them as a company can have negative consequences against our own community. Mm-hmm. And I think what, you know, Damon's bringing to light is that, you know, that there is a, there is a, a current wave happening across the nation that is effectively trying to outlaw being trans and being LGBTQ. Like if it's not white and it's not heterosexual, it's not cool with them. And because these individuals are being put into office, they're being assigned into high levels of leadership with companies. They are being given judgeships. They change the course of our of our society like they they end up theoretically and i say theoretically because i don't have the data rec- like representing a minority so in some positions it's a whole power grab situation that they're fearful about the future change that's coming and they're trying to prevent it mm-hmm. and if it's reality that more youth are coming out as queer as lgbt that has ever happened in human society and more adults are recognizing themselves as bisexual and pansexual there's a part of me that's like baby you're too late like in another 10 to 15 years this world is going to be very different because those individuals that are coming to these terms with themselves already (laughs) right are gonna be the ones that are you know like it's happening in the work that I do in public health. People are pushing back on the CDC and being like, we need SOGI, S-O-J-I, or sorry, S-O-G-I, sexual orientation, gender identity. We need it to be recognized in studies. We need it in our medical forms. It needs to be recognized. So we can say as a population, this is the data that comes out of it. Because you recognize race, you recognize ethnicity, but you don't recognize these pieces of who we are and how it can affect us and potentially have, you know, real importance in terms of like what we do in in the health and the Medicare system or medical systems. That aside, I think where this gets really complex is is that Disney, Chapek made a decision to not say anything at first. And then when he did make a statement, he was like, we don't, we don't get involved in this. Like this isn't part of what Disney does. And it's like, Oh, but bitch, you already have been giving money. So you have been actually taking action whether or not you want to own it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't quite work that way. And then to turn around and like, like backtrack and make another statement. The most damning thing you said was, quote, I missed the mark in this case, but I'm an ally you can count on. And I will be an outspoken champion for protections, visibility and opportunity you deserve. That's beautiful. Somebody else might have written that because you you fucked up. You screwed mm-hmm. up. 
like and, it's too late. Like you, yeah. you've uh, you've already made the the mistake as the person, and, and I think that people are are really just frustrated, and therefore, you know, of of high opinion. And back to the concept of the conundrum, it's like what what do we do? To me, this is just as parallel as J.K. Rowling and the Harry Potter IP shit. A new movie's about to come out this year for the Fantastic Beast series. We discussed it last year. Do you remember? We had this whole like debate about, well, how do you not give money to the person who's a, an absolute turd of a human at this moment for how they're treating, you know, the mm -hmm. the trans community? And what it came down to, I think, was we agreed that you would pirate it <laughs> so that they couldn't get anybody no matter which way it went. But that's yeah. only a solution to a to a smaller thing. Like it doesn't really address the fact that we have younger generations coming that I think some of us are very much invested in, to differing degrees, the success that they can have because we've been through a struggle. I don't I can't speak for the two of you, but for me growing up, um uh Billy Crystal playing the gay character on soap was like one of the earliest impressions I had of what it was to be a gay person. And it was just very silly and very queeny and very mm -hmm. funny. And yeah. I was like, uh, okay, that's a thing. And then we end up with the AIDS epidemic and it's like this scourge and the messaging is absolutely like crazy. And it's basically don't have sex because you're gonna die. And having gay sex, like, I mean, is a sin, right, is that you're going to die. And you, when you come out the other side and you realize, okay, that was messy, very complex, it was not black and white. There's so much to understand about it. But when you're younger, you can't, you don't get that. You don't know that. You don't understand it. And so it's really kind of a weird war that's going on, I think, right now, because, the, like, so all these students walked out of all these schools in Florida. They were like, screw this noise. Thousands upon thousands of students walked out of school and they're all carrying like, placards and signs. And they're like, they're basically all saying gay, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether they're gay or not, because they're like, this is utter bullshit. Like, you can't tell it. You can't avoid this type of stuff. And I think that's part of what this is really coming down to is, is that some people just don't want to deal with it and they don't want to address it. So they're trying to avoid it. Because maybe it makes them uncomfortable or they're fearful or something. And yet there are others who are like, for real? Like, really? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I really hear you, Damon, that the potential future effects of what it can turn into, I think, is, is the bigger concern. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it just seems a little, doesn't seem a little, it seems very... <sighs> not misguided, but like lopsided and, and, mm -hmm. and, and messy to be like, we're here for you. We support you. And it's like, really? Cause you have a problem with representation and the stuff you create. That's just one whole thing on its own, let alone what you're doing with like creating merchandise to take our gay dollars, quote unquote. And yet you're just giving money to political action groups that are trying to make our lives harder. Mm hmm. So, like, huh? Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of, that's, again, that's sort of the conundrum overall. Like, it's like, I think, I think actually Kat may have put it in the, Kat, let me pull it up, because I want to make sure. Um, yeah. So Kat put this in there really eloquently. Disney was saying something with their money, giving a lot of money to the people who created a bill. Disney is the boyfriend who was caught sleeping with the enemy when the relationship wasn't open in your eyes. Yeah. It's kind of this whole, like, why, why are you, why do we, like, why do we keep giving you money if you're going to use it against me? It's kind of like paying your assassin, for lack of a better phrase, you know. Right. I, th I think a really weird um, analogy would be like, why do I keep drinking this poison that you're giving me? So you're not wrong, Jeff, that 
they're actually taking a course of action for correction. Mm -hmm. But the only reason that they're doing it is because it's being demanded of them. Like, I think that's the part that's hard for people is to come to terms with the fact that, yes, they were giving thousands upon thousands, if not millions of dollars to these things without maybe sure you could feign ignorance and say you don't know. But what it really comes down to is when companies donate money, when billionaires, trillionaires, quadrillionaires donate money in political spheres, you can say there's no strings attached. You can say there's no effort. But the fact of just giving the money has an effect. It gives them the ability to campaign more, to get into office, to do what they want with their power position. And I think that's where people are really kind of like hurt. And and that's the key thing I think is that people just feel that and lost. Like, uh, what do we do? How do we move forward with this? And for me, part of the reason I, I brought this subject up was because when all the shit was going down a couple weeks ago, I was like, well, this just fucks everything because I'm planning to go to Orlando in September for the World Bear event, like for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was kind of and planning on doing some stuff down there. And now I'm like, like, like I felt for Adam as the organizer of that event. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. if this gets uglier and blows up more, you know, and it really turns into like a boycott kind of issue like this, this could go badly. You know, that one someone's the, just trying to do yeah. a nice thing. One of the first things that was said once this kind of started coming out, someone posted in the World Bear Weekend and the North American Bear Weekend, because they're both kind of co-owned, well, not co-owned, but they're both kind of produced by Adam. Mm -hmm. They were all like, well, are we going to move World Bear because of all the shit going down? And I commented, um, I think it was in the chat too, like, it's too late to move an event of this caliber and this size. You can't do it without essentially canceling the event. Right. Like you can't have it anymore. That's the only thing that you can potentially do, which could be a, you know, cost, you know, could be a problem. It could be costly if there's contracts involved, money that has already been spent that won't, won't be refunded. Mm -hmm. um, so the event will probably more, will more than likely go on whether or not, um, there's a official boycott, boycott or not. Ooh, words are hard. Um, however, kind of as I mentioned in, to this person, it's up to you to make a decision on whether you want to go or not. You have to make that choice. Like right. if you feel so strongly about it and you are choosing not to, and you choose not to attend because it's in Florida and you don't want to give Florida money, then cool. Like, that's the choice that you're making. And that is all right. But the event right now cannot make that choice. Everything has already been signed. Everything has already been started. We're months away from the event happening. Because we had to plan these things a year in advance. As someone who, you know, we have Gary as an example. But I've listened to people that are doing these things. They have to make all these preparations years almost in advance. When COVID hit and everything had to pivot, everything, you had to make all these choices. And some people were lucky, like hot hotels and venues and stuff were being cooperative because they knew we were all kind of in the same fucking you know, boat. And they were like, okay, well, we'll hold on to things for a while until maybe this boils over. They didn't expect it to take two years, but um, some people were hoping that this would eventually kind of calm down and then we could maybe have the event again. And then if that didn't, you know, months later found out, okay, well, that's not going to happen. So let's try to move it a little further. But it's going to be up to the event to make the decision on what they're going to do. Um, and if they choose to, um, keep going, then it'll be up to you as a person with your own dollars to make the choice on whether you wish to do it or not. Um, 
like you, Gary, right now, I am planning on going to Warburg. We both are. Um, I don't know if I'm competing yet, but that's another story. But um, there's only so much that will potentially change my mind about not going. Mm. I don't know what all that will entail, but as you know, I obviously have feelings about this bill and what's going on. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, because to me, this is where we start losing focus and losing track of things is once we go, okay, well, they've sent, they've said what they've said. They've kind of done what they can do and they've changed their, they've changed their mind for lack of a better phrase. Let's just move on. Well, what happens in the next campaign, political campaign? And we have yet another person that has gotten money from Disney or wherever. And all of their things are against us. Like, you, you're going to have to keep an eye on it. You can't just let it go and move on. You have to keep an eye on it. And yes, it's hard to keep an eye on every fucking thing that is going wrong in this country. <laughs> but... If you don't, at least in some way, then things like this will keep on happening. And our rights are at risk. And as someone who is doubly negative in a lot of ways because of things going on in this country, I cannot just let it go. I can't. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and and I think one of the hardest parts is we don't know what the the outcomes gonna are gonna be. I think twenty twenty to twenty twenty two has been um it's been eye opening. It's revealed things that we didn't know prior to the last administration. I think looking back we as an American society were living in a like kind of a dream state, but we didn't know that. Yeah, there was like, you know, these different issues that were ongoing and, you know, technology was going to be a problem and the youth, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, there were all these like things that were, you know, being bantered about or discussed or whatever. And what we didn't know was that there was a large swath of our, you know, country that was brooding and upset and like feeling that they weren't being represented because the minorities were being given a voice the minorities were being given rights the minorities were being recognized and then we saw the swing of the pendulum from a very progressive era in a different direction and now all of this stuff has come forward and you know families have been like split out friendships no longer exist in some areas like people have really gone through this reckoning with discovery that there's a whole section of our country that was like not down with the progress not down with the evolution not down with like whatever you want to call it being woke whatever like slur or slander or label that you want to give it that people feel is not what they want. They just want to be Americans, goddammit. They just want to be patriotic. They just want to stand in representation of what the flag is, because that's what I believe in. And it's like, sorry, like, you, you're welcome to have your own position, your own opinion, but you don't get to make up new facts. And you don't get to eradicate actual history because you weren't taught it. Or you didn't know about it. And it is. It's difficult for people to learn. That they've made mistakes. That they were wrong. That things were omitted. That you know. You know that things existed. And you. Didn't like it or didn't know about it. Or weren't made aware of it. And and I think that's what some of us. Are, are now seeing is. All the ripple effects of where that stuff. Comes out today. Um, and drawing attention to stuff. And so in the end, 
I don't think that there's anything that's like as far as clarity of an answer. I think that's why I was calling it the conundrum because it's like it's a confusing time. It's like what what do we do? For me personally, it's a wait and see. I felt that way when all of this shit was kind of going down. I was like, okay, I'm not going to like start jumping on one side of a bandwagon about this issue because I'm not really sure I have all the facts or I know everything. And I still don't. But waiting to see what Disney did gave me a moment to just like kind of not chill, but like hold myself, but pay attention. And then I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not thrilled with the new CEO I don't I'm not sure if they're going to last. I'm sure how they're going to do. Um, and, you know, the, the company has had problems with their CEOs over the years. You know, Eisner was no prince. Um, Iger's no, you know, God. It, it, everybody's got their own issues and stuff. And that's the other thing is it's a business. Period. And and that has its own complexities. Um, so, you know, time will tell where that plays itself out at. Um but it's also, you know, something that is important and has really kind of grabbed our our community in a direction. Um, you know, it coming up, it's almost April. Usually in the month of May is when all the pride shit starts happening. And we have already talked about this ad nauseum before. All the logos change because it's going to be pride month. Look at how proud we are. This is like who we are. This is what we do. And I think the community is starting to say, ah, 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 like, that's great. So you slap some colors on it. Where is your inclusivity? Where is your equity? Where is your diversity? Where are your things that you're doing to actually show that you care about your employees and about this community? You just can't sell us merch or whatever and think it's okay. It's not good enough. I think it is, is part of the one of the multifacets of the issue. And then on the flip side of it is, as we were saying earlier, I think this comes back around to we've been giving you our money. We've been spending our money with you in good faith. And now we question that that was actually the right thing to do. And so I, I think that they've taken an action that is probably the best middle ground thing that they could do was to just be like, OK, we're going to stop doing donations. And we're going to reassess. And then we're going to like make actual concerted efforts of what we're going to do. You know, I mean, Disney's been under scrutiny for a great many things over the years. Mm -hmm. It's kind of embarrassing for them that one of the legacy family members, Abigail Disney, has been hypercritical of them as well. I mean, she even did a TED talk. It's astounding. She she is the person in Game of Thrones that's running around with the bell yelling shame. Shame on you for the things that you do and what you've done. And she is is forthright and says, you know, that I like my name is a piece of this legacy and I am not proud of what this company has done. And I would expect them to do better. And so doing better is actually carrying through actions that show that they're making an effort. But, you know, that's what remains to be seen, I guess, at this point. Yeah. Yeah, act, the actions will show us the re reality if they're if they're going to stay true to the words that they're putting out there right now. And it, again, it looks like they're trying, and that's the hopeful part that maybe this will mean something, and maybe it'll be beneficial, and maybe it'll be helpful, and maybe it'll change their direction now that they've kind of been slapped in the face with the reality of it. Do I think it's going to happen? Maybe. It might. Um, but only time will tell. You know, we'll see how this goes. We'll see what happens in the next couple of months, because if the article was correct, this is going to potentially be signed in July, or go into effect in July. Mm-hmm. So time will tell us soon or rather than later what will what will happen. And, and I think it's gonna it, be yeah. 
And I think in terms of this specific bill, I regret to say it's too late. Everything was too late. Like it was already too far gone down the path of its ultimate destination for anything to be changed. And no matter what, like there was no winning. Like you're not going to be able to stop the bill. And Disney still looks like shitheads for giving money to the politicians. You know, like, like, so I really do feel like it's more of a lesson learned question mark. Like, mm. and that's, that's what remains to be seen is what comes out of it um, in the future. And it's also incredibly complex, you know, Pixar's recent movie turning red about a young 13 year old um, Canadian Asian girl in Toronto in 2002 I've watched the movie. I really like it. It's very fun, but it's getting a lot of like, it, it's being bandered about like parents are having problems with it. We're introducing sexuality. No, you're not introducing sexuality. You're introducing hormones and pubescence. Oh my God. What do we do? Like, yeah, a, a girl and menstruation. Okay. It's technically a minor point in the film, and yes, it's called Turning Red. And it is about like the changes that come about as an allegory. I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff to it. And, I, and mm-hmm. part of me is like, watch the damn film, then make an opinion. But that being said, like, I get it. It's complex. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of people are championing it. But there's also a whole segment of people that are really upset and bothered by it. Parents who are like, I don't know what to tell my kids. Blah, 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 blah. And there is a part of me that's like, well, figure it out. That's what parenting mm-hmm. is. My parents weren't perfect. They fucked up. They tried. You know? My parents stuck me in family life classes. That's how I learned everything there is to know about puberty was through like these family life classes that were like the 1990s, you know, sex ed classes. Was this family? I remember it clearly in my head because that was what it was called. <sighs> so my point in bringing up Turning Red is I get it. It's hard to like, to be a content creator to make things and not know how they're going to be received and worse yet like if people are going to find them controversial (sighs) the world like i don't think it's possible anymore to make anything that people are not going to criticize that they're not going to pull apart or you know um you know turning red is being championed as like an all women led like directed, produced, like, you know, a uh, film and how important that is and how it affected like the outcome of that. You know, it, it it's an important like evolutionary strong point that they can, you know, be proud of. And yet, you know, to some people it's like they don't care about that. They're disregarding it. They're like, you know, they don't like the fact that it's about, you know, that the mother actually talks about menstruation products in the film. Like <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, honey, that's nothing. Like, <laughs> there's so much more that they could end up discussing. <laughs> just... <sighs> and and so I feel that at this point, no matter what, there was going to be no winning. Mm-hmm. Um, and because they're so large and they own so many things, you know, um, Marvel and the Fox acquisition, <sighs> like the characters, the stuff that's in the comics. Like Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings, they modified a whole lot of stuff to be able to create the film because Disney, understandably, and Marvel were trying to step away from the racist past of the comics. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of them attempting to make things better, and yet they still get criticized, you know? So my feeling on it is it's kind of like the president of the United States not me. I don't want it. Thank you very much. Someone else can do that thing. I wouldn't want to be Bob Chapek for nothing right now because I'm like, I can't imagine the amount of scrutiny and the difficulty of that position and what's happening. That said, I have to kind of make decisions for myself on what I want to do and how I want to be supportive. And for me, it's not clear. That's kind of really what this comes down to is it's like, "Eh." you know, like, I'm not sure what it what it will be. And I think it's uncomfortable to be in this in between this strange limbo land. Like 
waiting to see what the outcome is, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. Sort of. It's difficult. And I think it's going to always be difficult. It's going to be uncomfortable as well. You're probably going to have to face things that you normally don't have to think about. And even myself, I'm having these issues. Um, even, I mean, just talking about it now, when I when I saw this was a topic, I was just like, okay, here we go. Because um, I have to face stuff that I've probably for a long time have not truly, like, faced. Because it's just like, okay, well, let's just, you know, let's move on. Because it's, it, it's too much. Like, no, it's going to be too much. Like, don't worry about it. Like, leave it alone. Leave it alone. And maybe it'll go away. And that's kind of the, you know, the thought I've had for many years. Um, personally, now, within the past 10, 5, 10 years... Um, it has become apparent that I can no, not just put it, you know, put it away and put it aside. I can't anymore. Um, and I think as we were as a nation growing and becoming more aware and asking for the receipts, um, it's going to come to that reality, you're going to come to that reality that nothing is really perfect. But nothing really should be perfect. But the things that are, that we can potentially resolve, we need to make sure that they get resolved. Because if we do nothing, it has the potential to bite us in the ass later. This makes me think about... um... When I was in college, like I, I came out in college, like I came out my freshman year and I spent part of my five years at, at college at university learning about LGBTQ history because I'm, you know, I guess I'm a bit of a nerd, a bookworm. Like, you know, I, I read a lot when I was in my teen years and stuff. And so one of the things that's never left me is so from the Holocaust, there's this quote and you're both probably familiar with it um, from a um pastor martin niemuller i think is how you pronounce it um and he said you know it's kind of short but um this quotation is that first they came for the socialists and i did not speak out because i was not a socialist then they came for the trade unionists and i did not speak out because i was not a trade unionist then they came for the jews and i did not speak out because i was not a jew and then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me and it's really profound because the concept is to say, if you don't stand for others, what's what's to keep things from you being next or ultimately affected by whatever these things are that are occurring? Um, and so if if politically within America, we allow individuals to pass laws to disenfranchise, to ignore, to eradicate, to erase like the the existence of of people where does it end like what then what happens what comes next a parallel could be made to what's happening with abortion rights in the nation states are passing laws more and more effectively six weeks six weeks 16 weeks you know, it, six weeks. It's it's getting to the point that most likely the Supreme Court is going to make a decision that's going to have vast impact later this year on the women's ability to what they're going to be able to do in the event that they want to end a pregnancy. And it's been presumed since the 70s, since Roe v. Wade, that this was just law of the land. Well, it's law of the land until the law changes. That's really what it comes down to. And so because we have a 6-3 conservative majority in our own Supreme Court, there's quite a possibility that a bunch of things could happen. And some are concerned that if women's rights change, then what else is to fall? What else is to be challenged? What about marriage equity? Will 
gay rights be a part of that? Will we no longer be able to get married? Don't know. So I think this is a, a, an, a representation of a small slice of a bigger pie about the efforts that are happening within America and what that means and what it could become. And we just don't know. And it's not cool. It's not fun. It's not enjoyable. And yet we don't really have an answer. But that wasn't the point of this. Like we're not <laughs> we're not going to solve this. We're not going to fix things. Um, and yet uh, it's helpful, I think, to be, at least be reflective on it and to engage and, you know, kind of have a discussion and an understanding of where things are at. And to be fair, you know, we might have gotten things wrong and, you know, not um, – been accurate and you know what it is that we're saying it's more about the recognition that there's there's things going on and we're not sure what will come next and where we go with it in that case right <laughs> okay so it sounds like that's the end <laughs> Play ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. She has an email that comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 361 COL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can find us at various social media outlets at, at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can join our entourage chat um, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash COL. You can uh, uh, subscribe to our calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can find various accoutrements at uh, zazzle.com slash cubs out loud, where some of our designs are designed by Speshi at which you can find more of his stuff at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also uh, subscribe to us at Patreon at patreon.com slash cubs out loud or send us some cash at ppel.me slash cubs out loud. You can also subscribe to us and rate us and review us over on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon Audible, basically any other place where you can subscribe to podcasts. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box That Puck, Puppy Box, Cub Box, something or other. And Windjump, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch. And uh, where I do Bears and Dragons on Thursdays. Damon. <sighs> okay. If this sneeze comes during this thing, I apologize. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Um, most beer related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. Yay! <laughs> now you can sneeze. If you would like to get in touch with me online, you can pretty much find me anywhere as GearBear73. <laughs> And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now. Bye.